Welcome to the Copper Spice YouTube channel, and thanks for joining us. In this video, we're going to talk about undefined behavior. C++ Undefined Behavior This is going to be a conversation about undefined behavior. Our intent is to explore what undefined behavior is, why it is important, and how your code can be affected by it. Programmers tend to talk about a few types of undefined behavior, but usually only after they have a crash or a difficult bug to work out. For most projects, avoiding undefined behavior is not part of the design, but rather it is usually an afterthought. So let's start by asking the question, what is undefined behavior? It is the result of executing code whose behavior is not defined in C++. Every operation your program can execute either has a defined meaning or does not. If you do something in your program which has undefined behavior, you are outside the C++ standard and it makes no guarantee about what your code will do. It is your responsibility as the programmer to make sure the code you write never causes undefined behavior because a correct program must be completely free of undefined behavior. If the behavior of your code changes when you turn on the optimizer, your code is written incorrectly. This is usually a sign that you have undefined behavior somewhere in your program. If you are not aware of undefined behavior or do not understand it, there's a good chance your code will have bugs which are hard to locate. Correct code means not only a program which satisfies the goals of the project, it must also be free of undefined behavior. The notion of undefined behavior is usually not addressed in most computer science courses and seldom talked about by developers unless they are compiler designers. Knowing about undefined behavior can help you visualize what is causing a particular bug and make a better educated guess about where it is. So is there anything good about undefined behavior? There are advantages when undefined behavior is clearly documented by a standard. A C++ compiler is allowed to assume there is no undefined behavior in your code. This allows the compiler to optimize code for the target platform. A good compiler can use this knowledge to restructure your code for optimal performance. This is a partial list of items which are defined in the C++ standard as resulting in undefined behavior. Keep in mind, this is not a complete list. The information for what is defined to be undefined behavior is scattered throughout the standard. Most of the ones we have identified here are not only undefined behavior, but are capable of causing serious problems in real code. Many of these, like using an uninitialized variable, are easily avoided by paying attention to the structure of your code or using compiler warnings. One of the more unusual items on this list is an infinite loop without side effects. This means a loop in your program which never terminates and which only modifies local variables or does other things which cause no change in the global state of your program. Such a loop may look like valid code, but it in fact is undefined behavior. We realize that thinking about undefined behavior as a really bad error is incorrect. Undefined behavior is a separate thing, and it is not an error. We have coined the term ubine to highlight this fact. Take, for example, the fact that integer divide by zero is undefined behavior. However, floating point division by zero is a well-defined error, which gives you a result of a nan, which is not a number. It could be reasonable to return a NAN from a function as an indication that the computation did not yield a valid result. Or you could do the floating point division and then test for a NAN. If you attempt to divide by zero in integer arithmetic, you cannot check after the fact because undefined behavior has already occurred. As another example, the at method in std colon colon vector does an internal check to verify if the index is valid. If it is out of bounds, an exception is thrown, which is a valid error and not undefined behavior. 
It's important to understand how the concept of undefined behavior interacts with your compiler. The main purpose of undefined behavior is to give the compiler room to optimize your code. If optimization is off, the compiler really doesn't do anything special with your code, and it makes a fairly literal translation of your source code into an executable. With optimization off, it's fairly likely that undefined behavior may do what you expect, so you believe the code is working as you had intended. Once you turn optimization on, the compiler is not just looking at the literal translation of your code, but at what your code means and whether it can be restructured to improve performance. Among other things, the compiler is allowed to remove unreachable code, and undefined behavior means that that section of code is not reachable. Compilers are not required to tell you if something you've done results in undefined behavior, because it often is impossible to determine this after the optimizer has run. With the optimizer on, if your program has undefined behavior, it is very likely to produce extremely strange results. Compilers are allowed to optimize your source code differently based on what options are set, the version of the compiler, and the target platform. Compilers are also getting smarter and more intricate. Things which were always undefined behavior, but not optimized by the compiler in the past, most likely went undetected. As compilers get smarter, this is going to happen more often. It is clear in this simple function, the return statement is missing. But sadly, we missed this. And at the time, we were not aware it was undefined behavior. In a complex function, it can be difficult to see where every path leads and if a return statement is missing. The real danger and the most common outcome with code like this is at runtime, after doing the comparison, the program will fall through to whatever code comes next in memory and then continue until it reaches some random return statement. Since this code produces undefined behavior, it is actually unreachable code and the compiler could in fact assume it is never called and optionally discard this code or the code which calls it. Here is an example of some code with undefined behavior using std string. The idea of this code was to parse the input string, walking one character at a time. The if statement looks at the character located at index plus two, which is fine until you reach the greater than at the end of the string. You cannot access off the end of a string. This is undefined behavior. If the operator bracket method is implemented with an assert, your program will terminate right away, and if you are really lucky, you might get a stack trace. If there is no assert, it could take an undetermined amount of time until memory is corrupted enough for your program to crash. Now you are debugging something and you're further away from the problem. If your compiler is super efficient, it may see that executing this for loop is always undefined behavior and simply remove some portion of the code, possibly the entire for loop. This means class name will always be empty and you are unlikely to crash. One aspect of undefined behavior that I found very surprising in researching this subject is the behavior of relational comparison of pointers. The standard says that you can only compare pointers for less than or greater than if the pointers point to members of the same object or elements of the same array. In this sample, A and B are two completely independent variables, so it's undefined behavior to compare their addresses. Strangely, if you replace the less than with a comparison for equality, the standard says it must return false. Because these are two different variables, they must have different addresses. This is an example of undefined behavior due to the fact that the standard does not define what the relational operators mean in this context. The standard defines when less than is meaningful for pointers, and this particular piece of code simply does not fall in one of the defined cases. If you search for the term undefined behavior in the standard, you will not find the rule that is missing that covers this case.
Therefore, since this code does not have a defined meaning, nor is it defined as an error, and it is not defined as undefined behavior, it has undefined behavior. Here is another way you can get into undefined behavior. Modifying a single element in a container cannot invalidate iterators. The STL algorithms rely on this property. If the container you are using was implemented with copy on write, the dereference operator may need to do a deep copy, which will invalidate iterators. Using an STL algorithm with this type of container is undefined behavior and must not be done. The container might be well-defined and valid, but not if you want to use it with STL algorithms. Let's take a look at another container example. We implemented a flat map container in Copper Spice as we needed it in our DoxyPress project. It is extremely efficient for small amounts of data because there's no overhead. Internally, it uses an STD vector and it has a public API like STD map. Since there is no flat map in the standard, you are actually free to define a class like this any way you want. However, since other developers understand the API of the STL map container, it would not make sense to have an awkward or incompatible API in your class. Other programmers are likely to never use such a class, or worse, misuse it. Since the standard has not provided a definition or behavior for flat map, we were free to define it with no boundaries. This is not what the standard means when it talks about undefined behavior. In this case, we are simply defining new behavior. The flip side is what about things which are not defined in the standard? Are they undefined behavior? The flat map class we added was not defined. So was it undefined behavior before we added it or just not defined? Declaring a new class like QFlatMap introduces a new data type. Trying to use the name QFlatMap as a data type before it is declared is defined by the standard as a compiler error. Trying to use QFlatMap before it is defined is a syntax error. What is good for C++ developers is that the standard does not need to define a flat map for the QFlatMap class to have defined behavior. The standard also says the only thing which will guarantee QFlatMap does not have undefined behavior is if it is implemented correctly. So as C++ developers, we really want to write code which is free from undefined behavior, which is defined as correct code. In order to do this, the compiler can often help please pay attention to the warnings coming from your compiler. It's also wise to read the C++ standard in the areas that you are using. Static analysis <clears throat> tools, like that provided with Clang, or commercial tools like Coverity and Purify, can be very useful for this as well. There are a new generation of tools called sanitizers built into modern compilers. Take advantage of these tools in your testing and treat any undefined behavior or errors they report as real. If Thread Sanitizer says you have a race condition, you do. Find it and fix it. If UBSAN says you have undefined behavior, fix it so your code is correct. Volgrind is a runtime tool, which allows you to test without recompiling. Every issue Volgrind found in our libraries was a legitimate problem, and fixing it improved the code. The more undefined behavior you remove, the closer you will be to having correct code, and the more you will learn what is required to write correct code in the first place. For more information about the Copper Spice libraries, please visit our website at www.copperspice.com. Thanks for watching. We hope you found the content of value. If you have any questions or feedback, please leave a comment on this video please make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and come back in two weeks for our next video.